First off, I want to make it clear that this video is sponsored by Lexar, and in it, I'm going to be talking you through the various components on their NM760 PCIe Gen 4x4 SSD. So by the end of the video, you should know everything about M.2 drives like this. Let me start with the form factor. Drives like this are called 2280, because they are 22mm wide and 80mm long. Pretty simple. You can get longer, up to 110 millimeters, and even shorter, down to just 30 millimeters. Although this this 2280 size is by far the most common. This drive will happily fit in anything from a, a laptop to a desktop to even a PS5. On the end of the drive is the M.2 connector. There are a few different styles here too, although this M key style on the NM760 is by far the most common these days. This allows for four PCIe lanes plus power to the drive at whatever PCIe generation the drive supports, which for the NM760 is the blazing fast PCIe Gen 4 standard. If we gently pull back the sticker, you'll see the first component, the controller. This is what the PCIe bus connects to, and what handles all of the data being sent to be stored and requested. In this case, Lexstar is using the Silicon Motion SM2269 XTF, one of their newest NVMe 1.4 compatible controllers built using the energy efficient 12 nanometer process, meaning less heat and longer battery life on portable devices like laptops. If you have the space, you can even use an optional heatsink to get even lower temperatures and even more stable performance. The controller's job is to be the middleman between your system via the PCIe bus and the flash storage that we'll cover in a second. One of the controller's main tasks is to map out where it stores each piece of data in the actual memory chips. You can think of the flash as the shelves in a massive warehouse, and the controller has to note down where it stores each item, so whenever you need to access it again, it can just look up on its list where it is and go fetch it for you. That list is generally stored in one of three places on the flash itself, in a DRAM cache, or in system memory. A DRAM cache is generally the fastest, something like Lexar's Professional Series NM800 features, although to help reduce the cost and make a drive like the NM760 as affordable as possible, you can omit the DRAM chip and instead either store the list in a fixed space on the flash, or even better, and just use the system's memory, using a technology called host memory buffer. This is great, as while a DRAM cache is going to be faster, it still offers an insane 5.3 gigabytes per second in reads and 4.5 gigabytes per second in writes. Plenty for anything from gaming to content creation. While there is more that the controller does that I would like to explain, it's worth knowing some background on the flash chips that actually store the data. You'll often hear them called NAND flash, because they are made up of NAND or NOT AND gates. We don't need to go into the weeds of exactly how that works, but let's say that you have a row of cells that can store data. In the NM760, it uses TLC, or three-level cell flash, so it can store three bits of data per cell. Each of these chips can store 512 gigabytes of data, meaning that there are something like 170 billion cells per chip, which is just insane. You can equally get more or less bits per cell. TLC, or three bids, is the most common, but QLC or quad bids, MLC or two bids, or even SLC or single bit options are available. The more bits, the more data dense the chips can be, often at the cost of performance and endurance. One of the tricks that the controller can do to eke out some extra performance is basically pretend that the TLC flash it's connected to is actually SLC or single bit. 
it's faster to write to a single bit in each cell than it is to write to all three bits at once. So the controller will essentially spread out the data, then once the transfer is complete, it can quietly shuffle it all back into a, a more well, easy to read format later. Thanks to that TLC flash, the density of these chips is frankly insane. This being the one terabyte model, it has just two of these chips on board, both from Longsys, Lexar's new parent company. These are actually 3D TLC chips, meaning that the cells are layered too for much better density. What's also impressive is their endurance, basically how much data you can write to them before they're likely to have any problems. This 1TB NM760 drive has a petabyte written rating, as in you can write a petabyte of data to it and Lexar doesn't think that you'll have a problem. I mean, a petabyte. They expect you to be able to fill the drive, empty it, and then refill it a thousand times. That's just incredible. While there is plenty more magic that the controller can do and more to explain, I have some videos on some of that already, so feel free to check that out in the cards above. But otherwise, that's kind of it for the sort of main parts of an SSD. The three main parts being the controller, optional DRAM, and the NAND flash. It is actually worth noting that only the controller generally needs to be cooled. The NAND flash actually prefers being warmer for the best performance, so keep that in mind if you are going to use a heatsink. Thank you to Lexar for sponsoring this video, and thank you to you guys for watching. If you want to check out the Lexar NM760, maybe pick one up yourself, head to the link in the description below. Otherwise, that's kind of it. Uh, the uh, temperature in here is uh, very high, so I'm going to head out now. But if you want to see more videos from me, hit the subscribe button. Feel free to check out some more videos on the end cards. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.